Hi everyone, welcome to Coffee Break with Your Soul. My name is Maggie and today I am speaking to the lovely Julie Cloutier. I hope I pronounced your last name uh, well enough. And we're going to talk about her journey prior to awakening and post awakening. Hi Julie. Hi Maggie. So great to see you. So let's just get started. I want to know how your journey began, where it began, you know, whether we call it seeking or searching or whatever. Yeah. Can you can you actually sort of pinpoint the, the moment where you felt that you embarked on some kind of search? Um, yes and no. It's really strange because uh, when I was a child, my parents were into Hinduism and they were in they were listening to Ramdas. Uh, there's an old vinyl. There is five series of five discs. And so my mom told me like a, a few weeks ago that I, I, I heard that when I was a child, I heard these. And they were looking for truths and they were, vegetarian and searching and and my dad was um was an alcoholic so he he was searching a lot uh reading Krishnamurti and mm -hmm. and um he was very deep but he never got what he was looking for he he was suffering a lot and he suffered till the end mm -hmm. of his life he died uh, two years ago. And I never searched for, for that. I was just, all my life I felt something's missing. Like I'm supposed to find something or um, why don't I do this or that? Why don't I find a purpose? And it felt like empty, it felt like very sad. <laughs> but I, I was going through life having some nice experience. Uh, I did photography, ran, I had a blog. So I can't say that I was mo always sad. I had fun, but there was something that was like, something is missing, I don't know what it is. And, I, and at some point it became very like heavy, like I don't know if I'm gonna be able to be like that anymore. Like even my, in the, after my dad, uh, my dad died in 2020, there came a point where I was sad for his departure, of course. And I was also relieved because I was always worried all my life, worried about him, worried about everything. But there was a point where I would see friends go to ski and I was like, oh, I don't feel like it. And they have fun and I don't know why I can't have fun. I was like feeling empty. And so I started to, and this is just like two years ago, so I didn't know anything about spirituality or. Did you did you look at did you look at other things? Um, you know, the sort of uh, you know the self improvement or any other sort of ways of to help yourself or to you know to find. No, no, the, the well, the thing I did uh, when I was twenty five, I went to therapy because I was. Really, I was having a hard time adjusting to life because mostly because of my the instability in my childhood, mm -hmm. and um, I was having trouble just not being so serious, not being so responsible. Just going out to have fun was something really hard for me. <laughs> it was hard, like to go back to, to the Monday morning. Like I was having a lot of up and down, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of issue with um, worthiness, like being worthy of having a nice partner or having friends. So I went to therapy for, and I went for 10 years every week. I had this idea maybe four years or something like that. But then at, at some point it became more, not as a need, but more as a really helpful tool. Right. So I continue because I felt it brought me a lot of uh, goods. <laughs> like it really, it was really helpful. So we could say it was kind of a self-help, mm -hmm. but healing at the same time. Um, 
place and um, it brought me to loving myself, you know, like being kind to myself, kinder. <laughs> right. right. And, kinder. It and it gave you, I'm assuming it also gave you some tools to deal with maybe some unsettling emotions or that. Yes. Sort of thing, and right? some, also some, maybe some, I needed something to anchor why am I like this or that and mm -hmm. understanding where some trauma came from when I had, when I had gone through. Because um, with my dad being an alcoholic, I was left alone a lot and I had to be an adult <laughs> very young. Yes. And um, I also, I, even when my mom divorced, I decided I would stay with my dad. I had like some kind of a connection with him where I would carry his pain. I would try to make him happy. And, Right. So, you had you, you had yeah. some sort of a sense respons of responsibility for him, even though he was he was yes. an adult, right? Yes. Um, yes. So I'm I'm interested in terms of because I've never been to therapy, so I'm yeah I always like to hear you know in what ways the therapy um, helped people, and so I wonder, given that you've done it for so many years, did you still have the sense that something was missing, even though a lot of things have improved or or you were yes. just kind of content yeah what what i what i did in therapy when i when i did it was perfect for me at the time i needed to be more functional i needed to make friends i i i needed to be okay with having a job going out in the world you know normal life <laughs> yes. to lead a normal life and to have a partner which is respectful of my of me because I, be, before that I went into difficult relationship with um, physical domestic violence when I was 18 because I came from a place where I had no um, confidence in, in myself and I was I'd say like kind of broken so not, not, not even probably not even a good reference point as to what's healthy right yeah, 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 and 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 a dependency into trying to help people who are yeah. suffering. Yeah, and um, with domestic violence, of course, the partner is suffering. Cool. So it was kind of a same version as I'm trying to help an alcoholic. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um, so the therapy was more to just have a functional ego. <laughs> To, Got it. to have like a sense of I'm um, worthy of being loved and worthy of respect in, in with friends, partner, job, you know, just to have like a sense of um, normal uh, accept, acceptance. Yes. Yes, I understand. So, yeah. so what happened? So, and then this and the therapy is the place where you you meet with someone who's in total uh, non judgment towards you, and who's able to hold the space, even though it's not the same as the self realization. It's still a place where you can be yourself. You can cry. <laughs> we yeah. cried a lot, and can discuss and have someone reflect on you. So I, I can't explain the whole process because I'm not a psychotherapist, I'm not a psychologist, but from my uh, perspective as a client is the place where you can meet yourself and talk about your trauma and then have some someone be compassionate in, in helping you in, in healing. So, so you've done it for 10 years. And so what prompted you to seek more? Uh, you know, what was, oh, what yeah. was missing? What, what, what was so missing? after that, like um, around, uh, I'm 15 now. So I was 35 when this kind of uh, was enough for me. And I thought, okay, I'm, I'm good now. I can continue on my own. And um, I went through some like nice period and, and, well, good and bad, you know, some good experience, bad experience, but I just went through life, you know, having like experience working, working on my home, working for an employer, sports, um, some interests with, and also traveling, you know, normal stuff. <laughs> uh, 
and then at some point I started to feel like I I couldn't find happiness like I was doing all these things they were quite fun but there was still like an empty sense of emptiness like nothing is going to bring me up happiness so I started to really be desperate because I thought if nothing ha bring me happiness what's going to happen to me if I have all I can wish for <laughs> yes externally you know? externally yeah right. yeah externally <laughs> like we have we have a, enough uh, money we I mean we're not rich but we just have enough and we have enough to, to do things that we love, to travel, ski, or... And all these experiences, they, they're fun, but I was kind of, I don't know, there's something, I mean, I feel there is more to life than just this, you know, having stuff <laughs> and doing things. And I remember, I remember you telling me when you would, um, you would set these goals, you know, some, some, for example, yeah. like running or, you know, yeah. reaching a certain, you know, long distance running and checking what's possible for you. And it was exciting while you were at it. But as soon as you reached any goal that you set for yourself, it was like, that's it, you know? Yeah, it, I have to yeah. do something else. You yeah, have to do or something else. Something was, else to do. And, yeah. But I was always passionate in, in those experience it's not it's just that I, yeah I think I I studied photography I loved it I was immersed into uh, art history and I loved it I loved it while it last and then at some point okay then what else you know what else and yeah. so I would start another project and I did some running for five years and it was really fun and I I I, I think I, I was connecting to being also while I was running. So that was part of, of it. But uh, without really knowing it, mm -hmm. I felt more closer to being. And, um, and, then, and I would immerse myself in that. Like um, I wrote a blog about running. I ran more and more long distances. I did an ultra marathon and I had a goal of running a very, very long distance. I, I did that. I trained a lot for that. And then when, when it, once it was a 10, I was like, okay, I think I've had enough now. <laughs> what else? <laughs> Yes, it, so it, was like went, a, it was like a loop. It was like a never ending. Yeah, loop. it was fun. Yeah. It was each experience was fun. I would train my dog and I would immerse myself in that. I trained my dog like for two years very intensely with like some nice class about it, mm -hmm. you know, webinars and how to train a dog. <laughs> so it was really fun. But then there was always this thing like, huh, what is it that's missing? And it came, it became more intense at some point. I was constantly worried. It's something I learned when I was young. I was worried about what's gonna happen, you know, what just happened. <laughs> so I was always like in the past and the future, what's gonna happen next. And when my dad passed away, I was like, oh, I'm not worried anymore about, about him because I was off often worried he was living in an apartment where there were fears about fire because he was smoking a lot and um, I'm I'm the only child so I was the one like kind of having to deal with that and so not that I was not sad that he was not there anymore but I was kind of relief of, of this burden of being worried and it's not a burden like I'm not saying he put that burden on me I carried that burden but but then it just went and I was like oh wow what's next you know what and and so from there in 2020 um I well in 2021 uh, with the COVID, COVID came in March, right? Yes, the yeah, lockdown, March. I think. No, March lockdown. 2020, March 2020, there was a period of intense fear. Oh my God, what's that, the COVID and what's gonna happen to us? And You know, was the economy was gonna crumble. There was a lot of fear. 
And then the, my work, I was laid off for months. I didn't know at the time how long it would last. So at first I was kind of, oh, okay, it's fun. <laughs> we, 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 we would take walks. And then I, at some point I was like, oh my God, I had this idea that I, would, I was the person who would like to stop working. And I just realized, oh, now I'm bored. <laughs> And now I'm bored. I just wish we can go back to work. <laughs> That's interesting. And um, I went back to work and I had some intense uh, conflict with a person, a colleague at work. I'm, I'm bringing us to where the real shift happened. Yes, yes. Yeah. I had um, a big conflict with a person at work. It was really intense. And I was worried about all kinds of little things. There was some problem at work, let's say, or had imagined problems. And I would, I would spend sleepless night trying to figure out what to do, uh, why these problems arise. There was like an intense intensity in worrying. And, and it ended up in a conflict with a colleague. And she's uh, someone who's into meditation and um, being less in the ego self. And so at some point during the conflict, we met one-on-one -on -one and she said, are you, are you ready to let it go? Can we meet in another space in that conflict? And I said, yes. And there was some kind of an opening with that. And she said, and we, can, we could meet in, I had this, strong sense that I was distressed and I was feeling this distress as as I was feeling when I was a kid wow there was very clear to me that I was like I was in that distress at this time in this conflict there was that same intense distress and I told her that and she said um I hear you, I see you, and I love you. And I'm all like, I'm touched. Because when, when she said that, it was like, ah, oh, it kind of opened something. I was like, oh my God. To meet someone who's able to be that clear. And that, I, at that moment, something really shifted. I was like, I was ready to forgive everyone and everything. In That's absolutely was... incredible. And this is the same person that you literally just had this conflict with yes. and, you know, bumping heads. And yeah. how long yeah. did that go for? That, that, that sort of... That conflict thing. lasted about two weeks, but it was really, really intense. It was to the point where we had a team meeting and she had to mute me during the meeting. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't know if you ever went through that, but being muted in a meeting, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't realize, so I kept talking. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, after the conflict was over, we laughed about it. I said, it doesn't work. The person doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I would keep talking and no one, or, no one was hearing me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm able to laugh about it now. Oh <laughs> no my God, that's incredible. Stuff. So it that, really, what yeah. a moment. I mean, I could literally feel the the sort of the, the space as you were yeah, talking about Yeah, there was kind it. of a, some kind of a buildup, yes. some kind of a, and then an opening. And and that, that had me shift. I had to, at the moment, I was, I was about to choose a role in the company for whom I work. I had the choice to work more in teams, or work on my own mm -hmm. and I chose to work on my own because I knew there was like an intuition that I needed to go into introspection that I needed to be with myself and I chose this role I, we let go of the conflict and then I started to listen to some books about well-being I never listened to any and there was one I don't remember the name, where he introduced some stuff about awakening. I didn't know what it was. I didn't, I never heard the word. Well, not in my, I couldn't remember hearing what that was. Or, 
I didn't know anything about non-duality, nothing at all. I was completely like unaware of that. <laughs> and um, by a set of circumstance, I ended up listening to uh, the audiobook um, The Greatest Secret with Rhonda Byrne. And this is where, this was um, April. So January, this conflict, this opening, some introspective, I was going a lot uh, on my own, walking in the forest, just being on my own, and some, uh, a few audiobook. And on, I'm remembering the day on April 1st, well, on March 31st, I went to the hairdresser and the person was sitting in the chair. She said, I'm, I've never been late in 20 years. And now I, I was late today. So the hairdresser told me you have to wait an hour. So I was like, okay. I was like into this. Don't be too angry about stuff. You know? <laughs> and I started to listen to The Greatest Secret. And at first I wasn't so interested because I, did, I was not looking for the law of attraction kind of book. I did that. Yes, because that was her first book. I think the her first yeah, the, book the was... law, the secret, the law of attraction mm -hmm. was. Uh, mm -hmm. I I don't know when it was published. I kind I listened to it. I I have I had read it in two thousand eight. Right. And uh, it was of no interest to me. I wasn't looking for anything to create or to attract or to think that we can attract. I was like completely out of that. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of. Uh, things that were dropped along in my life like there was a period was where I thought uh, if making a lot of money would make me happy and I tried to trade the money market for a few years it was really really hard and when I did let go of that I I let go of the idea of making money would make me happy and that was like a great lesson so there were like a lot of stuff I had already dropped. I, I had a lot of, I went through a phase where I thought maybe I could go into uh, living with less, you know, like, a, I don't know the name. Minimalist. Is it minimalist? Yeah, minimalist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I read book about minimalist. And, and, and then when I started running, there was more like a balance of being and just following uh, other type of activity. So there was kind of a building mm -hmm. towards realization, I feel. And so uh, last, last year, almost a year ago, we're March 23rd, so April 1st, 2021. The next day, I started to listen to The Greatest Secret at the hairdresser. And then the next day, on April 1st, I was walking outside and I felt, oh, wow, it's strange. You're not a person. She was mentioning you're not a person. I was like, oh, that's strange. And then she said, if I ask you, are you aware? For me, that was like this, oh my God, I'm here. I'm just here. I was talking on my own. I was like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not doing anything. Oh my God, I was so relieved. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a person. <laughs> it's just an idea. It's just a thought. <laughs> I was like, for me, it was evident. I was like, how oh come no one told me before? <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of just normal. I mean, why don't I, why didn't I knew this before? It was like, oh yeah. I'm just here. <laughs> I know it's it's, I it's so this... Sorry, go ahead. It's so it's so amazing. P people have all kinds of reactions, you know, a lot of it is just a major emotional release and it's like lots of tears, but a I'm lot sorry. of it is also just laughter, you know, it's just it's just purely because I think I mean, I think in a way it's great that you didn't really have any ideas about what awakening is. I think it was actually to your advantage that you were it not. It really... helped me. Yeah, I think it helped. 
yeah. you know, that you were not immersed in, in too many concepts. So there was oh. simplicity, yes. you see? Yes. And so I think that um, because it's so easy, you know, the more we are immersed in these co concepts and different schools of spiritual thought, yeah. and then we have these ideas as to how it's supposed to look and how it's supposed to be experienced. And we're usually waiting for something grand to happen and, and you, you know, know what have... this was my it was my anchor because after mm -hmm. the mind came back with all kinds of questions yeah and of went course. some stuff you know some and this was my anchor i was like no it's real i felt it i saw it i know it i i was saying these words without knowing what they meant yeah. it means something you know yeah. like there was some kind of this, it kind of became like a, an anchor while I was lost in turmoil because I was yeah. quite lost after for a yes. while. So can we yeah. can we can we talk about that? So yeah, all I'm saying is that it's it's incredible when that moment actually happens. Is it's usually completely unexpected, and mm. it's well not usually. I think it's always unexpected, and it's so <laughs> so obvious and so ordinary in a way that it comes as a shock to people. To in particular to those of us who may have had some kind of expectations as to what it was going to be like, right? Um, so yes, so this is this is now the part two when we're entering the post awakening yeah. stage where so many of us, uh, depending you know where we're at, you know it can happen sometimes a couple of hours after, sometimes a couple of weeks, couple of months, couple of years. It's it's going to be different for everybody, but eventually. Uh, the mind, the ego sort of comes back and, you know, and it kicks our asses depending again where we're at and, you know, the extent to which it does. And so can you tell us uh, what it's been like for you since? Yeah. So after this, this moment, um, <laughs> I thought oh, I have to tell everyone. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> So I told my partner, he was like, yeah, so what? I was like, well, <laughs> you're not your thought, you know, you're like you're, you can see your thought, you're not your thought. And it, it didn't, it didn't work. Yes. So um, I realized, okay, I'm alone. <laughs> and um there was like a feeling like I was leaving people behind for me. Like there was like this feeling of going in this alone. Mm -hmm. And there was some, something that needed to be let go about bringing people in there with me. And um, there was also like, even though the scene was clear, well, there was a period of about four to six weeks where was totally peaceful and i i didn't even think about tomorrow there was no tomorrow never i was just there i was just here amazed how beautiful all this is and we're not going anywhere ever we're just here always and it's it is still evident now but i kind of lost it in part at some point so, but I felt this, probably this immense relief, all this baggage <laughs> could be dropped. So for a while, for, for around four to six weeks, it was really, really peaceful. And then at some point, oh, what now? <laughs> what is that? And what I do need, I do with it? Yeah. Yeah, there's, and there was like a need to understand. And so I started to listen to all kinds of non-duality, um teachers youtube video and books and a lot <laughs> and uh sometimes it helps sometimes it confused me <laughs> and uh the best thing i did is i found a teacher who gave one-on-one -on -one session and someone uh, on whose website, and she's not doing any one-on-one -on -one session anymore, so I'm not, not going to name her, but mm -hmm. on her website, 
she was uh, writing it's for people who are tired of seeking and they want to go to God in their own two shoes. And that spoke to me because I wasn't about to seek. Uh, I knew there was something in me that said, no, I'm not going to seek. I don't want to seek. I don't want to become a seeker. It's too painful. I need someone to help me go there by myself. And so when I first met her, there was a lot of emotion about like leaving people behind or having to let go about wanting everyone to be happy. And I was really sad. And so she said, that's, I feel it's, it's good for me to see that because I see that now it's coming through your body. And it's not, because otherwise it's gonna be a neck up awakening. It's not true, it's not real, nothing is real because I don't wanna feel anything. So mm -hmm. I kind of felt sad. And so she became my anchor into meeting, meeting all these emotions and meeting uh, the part that were still in need of uh, growing. And she explained to me that there was a need of, for the personality to, for the maturation of the personality. Yes. So, because to become your own sovereign self, it's inevitable. The person. And unfortunately, just, well, uh, I'm glad that you. I'm glad that you mentioned that because unfortunately, I think this is not talked about enough. It's one of those things. I think there's. I think there are so many people who awaken these days. You know, who have these realizations, um, but there's not enough. Uh, talk about what happens afterwards and uh, I think uh, this this friend of mine recently we were talking we were supposed to do the video another video together but um, we had some issues with internet so we didn't and we had a conversation exactly about that and the way she put it and she's obviously not the only person that talks about it but you know that a lot of us wake up and it stays at the level of the mind. In other words, the mind wakes up, right? The mind opens up. And then for many people, this is where it stays. And again, it can, it depends really how long, you know, where, where we're at, we're all so different. So I don't want to put any kind of um, rules. There's no, there's no rules as to how long it's supposed to take, but that gradually, um, you know, that awakening has to be embodied, has to be integrated. And this, so in that sense, that moment of realization really is just the beginning of the yes. journey. Yes. And for so and many, you think, right? You think you think right. Yeah. <laughs> right. This is the biggest cosmic joke, right? That you <laughs> think you've arrived and, you know, it's, it's it. That's it. You're done, right? You're sorted. Yeah. And, um, and, and actually what I found, what I keep continue to see is that that integration process, not only just the journey really only begins after yes. that realization. Yeah. And this is the most enriching, but also incredibly disturbing, sometimes excruciatingly painful process yeah. of discovering, um, discovering our conditioning, our stories, our beliefs that for whatever reason, something happens, the lid goes off and they just keep on coming out one after <laughs> another and you just have to face it. And if, if, if it's a lot at the same time, then it's like a bit of a shock, but, um, but it's not being talked about that, that while, yes, there are so many people that have been, have had that realization, but there are, I, I truly believe that there are not that many people where that realization is fully integrated, where yeah. it literally moves from the, the level of the mind into the level of the heart, into the level of the gut. And, yeah. um, and of course, this is just, these are all metaphors. This is just semantics. Yeah. This is just yes. the language used to, it's not to be to... You know, attached to. But um, so, yes, yeah, yeah. so this lady... Um, took you through this process initially, yes? And how, yes. how long did that last and, and did it help? It helped a lot. Um, it helped in anchoring me. Like I knew 
okay, I can have all these emotions. I can, and, and she also gave me some method of letting go because for example, there was something in me that was still the little girl that needs to take care and to take care of other people and, and that even felt guilty of being happy. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I'm gonna be happy and I'm gonna leave all, all of them in unhappiness yes. or all these yeah. ideas that came out and, and the sadness was real. Of course, because this was a huge part of your identity yeah. for most of your life, right? And, the, and then she guided me into a big part of letting go because I was ready to let go of that part. And she guided me into saying goodbye, you know, write a letter. How embrace this truly person. Embrace and, 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 and that's healing from the space of unconditional love, from that truth space, embrace this, this person. Even like we could talk like a lot about, okay, it's an imagined character, it's all fine, but you still, I mean, show up in life with this personality and this character. Absolutely. You, still, yes. you know, so she guided me into and I don't know how it is for anyone else because it's so different. Of course. But there was like um, here a, a need for loving, for being loving. And also I kind of had the, the method because I went into psychotherapy, I kind of brought this, this um, ability to be with the pain and, to, and then from truth, to embrace, to embrace it and let it go. Like I literally could see how I, there was a need to be listened, to be seen, to be loved. That was like, I felt as a child unseen, unloved, unheard. And then I, I was able to let go. So then it freed me to be in relationship with others without having this constant need to be heard, to be seen, to be loved. And then embodying more listening, loving, doing it for my yes, with no agenda. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, meeting myself in that space then enables you to meet because then you see there is no outside or inside. You can meet everyone or everything or life from that space too. And this without is denying, because if you deny the person, oh no, it's not there. It doesn't. It's not real. There's no freedom in there. There's no, it's, it's my way of understanding is to be in fearless freedom. There has to be healing. And if you can connect to that space of total unconditional love, then heal from there. Yeah. I'm, I'm really glad that you bring it up again because um, this is such a crucial part of this post awakening process to to not um, to not deny the humanness that is emerging and often even more powerfully than before. Yes. Um, and these feelings are so raw and and I think that there's such a fear in some of us that you know of losing the awakening that if we yeah. go there into our yeah. humanness that we're yeah. you know in fact a lot of people who when I say a lot of people that include myself by the way um, you know when there's some turmoil all of the sudden when emotions arise that are incredibly powerful there's a sense many people will will say I feel like I lost lost it I lost yes. my awakening yeah. Awakening, if, it's, if it was a true awakening, this can never be lost. There's no going back. What happens is basically the mind starts to play out and it looks real and there's a sense of, you know, there's, again, identification with all kinds of stories and conditioning and so on. And it all comes yeah. out to the surface. But what was seen is never lost. 
And so, and then yeah. there, there can be a tendency of holding on to that feeling of, that we experience when we awake it. And yes. so there's, and at the same time, there's the denying and not wanting and resisting to look at the stuff that comes to the surface. And that is the biggest disservice. And sometimes it really feels like you're completely lost it. it absolutely, feels like that. absolutely. You're like, I mean, I'm sure I am thinking, I'm the one thinking, I am inspired with all these thoughts. And yes, and this, is the, and this is the and then, biggest... Oh, okay, and then at some point it becomes, okay, the, the mind can do all kinds of things. It's not going to be lost. And this is the biggest <laughs> disservice that we can do to ourselves because this is exactly what ne all of this needs to be met. All yes. of this needs to yeah. be experienced yeah. without the breaks on. And I absolutely understand that this is easier said than done sometimes. But I'm so glad to hear that you uh, not only felt sort of guided in terms of knowing that you need someone uh, in that process yeah. to, to, to guide you through it. That, in it yeah. that the fact that you knew to do that also, because so many people yeah. go through it on their own, that's amazing and then the benefits of the therapy that that uh, became so clear because again they gave you enough tools to for example sit with the pain right which we're yeah. all trying to avoid normally yeah right yeah yeah so, and there was even some point where she uh, guided me to you know if if you're not if you if if you can't find awareness if you're like no i can't find it it's your brain is just trying to protect you. It's your nervous system. Yes. And, and I was able to feel like a place where I would meet some anger from my partner. And I was like, oh, I'm awareness. I'm awareness. I mean, I didn't want to go into the story of, no, it's your fault. And I would deal with it on my own. And I felt like almost punched in the gut. Like, yeah. oh, oh. and then, wow. Okay. And then the next anger phase came and there was like, oh. I'm still here you know that it was real it was like oh okay yeah, free. yeah. it's so it in, in that mapped. meeting yeah it's in that meeting of everything that that's that's where the freedom is you really you know it's like that I always I actually had this conversation with someone about it yesterday I was saying that the when the pain arises when uncomfortable you know emotions come to the surface and you feel this turmoil, like the mind wants to run away, right? The mind is so scared of going there because it feels like death, right? Whereas the true self at the same time is literally like rejoicing and saying, come on, come on, you know? <laughs> <laughs> do it. Yeah. You know? It's like, it's literally, it feels like, because that's where freedom is. It's yeah. And at some point you kind of even start to feel like, oh, there is a peace. It never leaves. It never and then leaves. there is all this turmoil yeah. on the surface yeah. or the sadness. Yeah. And it's kind of in, oh my God, it's kind of, wow. Yeah. I, see, I see it and I can welcome it. And I'm yeah. still peaceful, full, you know? And the greatest paradox is that when we actually allow ourselves to feel that fear fully or, or whatever feeling arises, but really with, with no breaks on, it really dissolves. It just dissolves. Yes. It's yeah. when we resist it, yeah. fight it, try to get rid of it, yeah. trying to avoid meeting it, you know, that's when the turmoil actually persists, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, it's fascinating, this, this whole journey. So what- so And there what was a few next? other tools from, I, I went through, uh, I went uh, to educate myself in, with a few teachers so I could take here and there what I needed. And a few things that really helped me, there was one that said, that was saying, there is no cause and effect. And I was like, oh yeah. If there is fear, there is, there is fear. It's not because of this and that. There is fear, it needs to be met, it needs to be seen or held. Or... So there is no cause and effect. I was like, oh yeah, that's really, really helpful. And, and some uh, other teacher told, um, you know, there are invitations. Sometimes you can just say, oh, no, thank you. That tool help also. Yeah. So it, it, yes, it has to be met. And at some point there are recurring loop of thought that you can Absolutely. say, oh, okay, Absolutely. do I really want to go in there again? <clears throat> no, it's really just like, okay, drop it. So there are different kinds of 
different ways. And also it's normal, it takes time to integrate. It's really, and there, there, there was a need for me to question everything, question all. And then until I realized, oh my God, everything is in thought. <laughs> you know exactly yeah yeah, yeah. And, and it was not seen totally on the first day of the big seeing of big limbs so there was a process of it has to come down for your brain to have the words or so there is like also a place where you can be like patient mm. And again, there are, you know, there are, there are absolutely no rules in terms yeah. of how long that process, uh, yeah. which is why it's always so important whenever, me, you know, what, you know, no matter what I'm talking about. Yeah, on this, it's on this really channel, personal. It's just like, yes. take what you need, take, take what resonate, take what, yeah. what speak I, to you. And, and if something, if something resonate, then it's going to be useful. Absolutely. But yeah. I always say it's so important to not get attached to not co to any kind of uh, way of how no. it's supposed to play out. It's so important no. not to compare. No, and, and, and for each and every one of us, too, because I mean, I don't know anything. I don't know what's going to happen next. I don't know. Yes, absolutely. We, we can we can only ever speak from our experience, right? From what it looks like to us. And so just to keep that in mind, because I, I've i heard and seen uh, so many examples of people where, you know, that integration, I have, I even um, read a book recently, uh, where Adya Shanti, I don't know if you're familiar with him, um, he was talking about this entire post-awakening process and it took him um, seven years from the first awakening because he had sort of two uh, really pivotal moments. And the first one, it took him around seven years to integrate it. So, I mean, it's, mm. but like I said, it's not in not being talked enough uh yeah. you know it's yeah. really there's so few uh there's there's more and more uh, i would say in comparison to to even a few years ago but yeah. um there's not enough being talked about in about the that post awakening process that honestly can be really excruciating at times but it's I would never swap it for anything else. <laughs> oh yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. And something interesting when I when I have this conflict with my colleague, um, I would deal with it on my own. And after uh, I don't know a few weeks after it was resolved, I, I was speaking to my mom, and she was saying, "Oh, you should have called me." I mean, and it never crossed my mind. I was like, even before the greatest secret. And the, re the realization, I was at a place where I'm, I need to deal with it, with it on my own. Mm -hmm. So there was already some shift in, in instead of talking about something, you know, to just be yes. with it. Yeah. So it had kind of started before too. So yeah, but so it was, but it's not easy. There was some some moment where I thought I completely lost my mind completely totally crazy I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and there is still like i still do have like a very active mind i mean it's not quiet <laughs> and there are moments where i really feel i have these problems i need to solve and, and then it's just oh okay i'm just here i'm still it's fine it's not as intense I think that there's also this sort of quote unquote misunderstanding that it's either or that you are either oh, yeah. quiet or, yeah. or there's it's noisy or you're in turmoil yes. or you're the quiet. But actually what I, what I continue to sort of discover that it's not about either or it's about being it in the midst, even in the midst of turmoil, even in the midst of feeling lost completely, yeah. right? It's, it's yeah. to me that it's not an either or situation. And something really, really helpful that, that this guy did with me is at first I thought, oh, it's all, nothing is true. And then I was like, I don't even know it's all story. And then she, she, she brought me to a place where you have this perspective, you know, from the person 
you're becoming, you're growing, you know, there is a tomorrow, yesterday. And then you have this other lens of perception where you're just here. We're always here now. There is no, like, it's just an eternal moment. Yeah. Can they both be true at the same time? And I said at first, when she asked me, she said, no. And she said, why not? I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she said, like, let's move you. Like, it's kind of, you have, it if is. you are able to all bolt at the same time. Ah, because this is a duality too. Yes. It's True about it's illusion. about being Ill awake. Illusion. It's kind of you can yes. bounce around in there as a, it's the base of the duality. Yeah. So yeah. to embrace the whole of it. Ah. It, I, I listened to someone recently, I don't remember who that was, and there was someone asked the question, how do you reconcile uh, duality with non-duality and I saw under you know and I and I laughed when I heard this question not in a in a, not in a sort of malicious way not at the person uh, asking but actually at myself because I remember how I used to have this dilemma and I realized that actually I saw these as two separate things and I and I laughed because I realized that um, that question the premise of this question points to someone who just like I did saw these as two separate things like I have to reconcile the two rather than seeing that it's both it's yeah. about being both fully awakened and fully human yeah. and one doesn't yeah. exclude the other and yeah. and and both can happen at the same time so but yeah I mean we, we we're all getting so caught up and and lost and find uh, ourselves again and again you know and, and it's part of yeah. this roller coaster ride of, of yeah. post awakening. Yeah. And it's it's so immensely helpful to be able to talk to others who went through and their own realization. Yes. Yeah, One of the things that I wanted to also mention uh, is that I was fascinated because obviously we we know each other. So I am now familiar uh, you know much more with your story. But one of the things that you know amazed me as you know was just the um, the things in re related to relationships and you know all the kind of conditioning that you had around which we all have we all have conditioning <laughs> that actually shows up in relationships primarily relationships are a brilliant way to uh, sort of mirror and to to show us the conditioning that we're having and how much post awakening even though it only happened in 2020 how much of that conditioning really just uh, dropped in the sense that it was seen yeah. and dropped so it doesn't play yeah. out anymore. I felt it easier with people than anything else because I could clearly see that my whole perspective changed the reality at once. Yeah. Like this energy and this. And so I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> I'm really creating yeah. it. Yes, it's really, it's, it's incredible. Is there anything else that you, or that we didn't talk about that you would like to mention in terms of the recent developments or, or, or new insights that you have had or anything else? No, I think we, we went through the whole uh, kind of journey. <laughs> Brilliant, which continues. <laughs> so maybe, which continues, of which course, continues. yes, of course, without end. I'd say what I would, I would, end with is by meeting yourself in that space of love it dissolve it dissolve the the pain but it also proves to you that you can be with it yeah. so by it's kind of a abolition of its own like because of that you then feel less fearful <laughs> Yes, of your emotions. Yes, uh, yes. and so the, the more you're able to do it, kind of, it's kind of the biggest chunk go first, and then it become less suffering. Yes. It's, it seems, anyway, I don't know for anyone else, but there's, there, there is like, this is where the total freedom and happiness come from, is, is if you're able to meet yourself. Yes, yeah. I, I couldn't. And then the transformation is 
through that. And for me, at first, there was this idea, this concept that the awakening uh, was, the destination was love. And love is the vehicle, but it's not the destination. Beautiful. And that, that spoke to me a lot when I, I was guided towards that. Because at first the mind came with me, oh, it's meaningless, there is nothing, it's all meaningless and, and empty. And, and, and that, that was the, still the idea, the mind's idea. But emptiness without the concept is pure. And to, to let go of this, this part of you that are, like, or to meet this part of you that are suffering brings you to that emptiness and that, and from their freedom, yeah. this freedom. And, and, and from there, actually, I would say that the, I know it's semantics, right? But I would say it's from there where the suffering ends, which means that there's so much, there's space for everything, including yeah. pain, including yeah. grief. Yeah, but yeah, and you're like, you're, you're like, oh, this, oh, I don't, I, I don't want to suffer. Maybe. Yes, yes. Because at first I was like, oh my God, I don't want to suffer. But then you're like, okay, it's possible. It's gonna, yeah. you know, there I mean, is no the, <laughs> the, the, the way it looks to me, at least for, for now, is that um, the, the suffering comes from resisting our humanness. It comes from resisting and trying to run away from those, you know, painful, uncomfortable feelings, right? Whereas, yeah. whereas when we actually allow it and, and, and feel the, the, the emptiness, right? That's, that's there or the wholeness or whatever we want to yeah, call it, yeah, right? Yeah. That's always here, always here. And, mm. and then there's space for every single upsetting emotion, no matter how powerful, and yeah. there's freedom to feel it. There's no running away. So there's no yeah. suffering as a result. Yeah, yeah, right? that's, it. that's the, the paradox. Yeah, like that's the really, paradox. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Julie, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. I just want to mention that uh, Julie is a transformative coach. If you want to... Um, maybe book one-on-one -on -one conversation with her to explore uh, these topics, then um, you can check out her website. I love the name of her <laughs> company and her website is called Truth Bakery. I love it. And, um, and I'm, going to leave the, um, I'm going to leave the details in the description to this video so you can check it out. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.